pre-market update. So I'm over here in Asia and so I'm up. I'm up usually like before the market even opens and then usually through the open. I try to take a nap around this time for an hour or two, but lately I haven't been able to do that. So my sleep schedule is completely messed up. So I'm making a lot of videos pre-market because I get bored after a while and hopefully these are kind of helpful. Um, so I went over the video earlier that was Elliott Wave, where I think this market could go. This video is going to be gap fills, supply demand, uh, potentially moving averages too, but just basically showing you um, setups. So again, in the video, I said that this could be a second wave, but more than likely, just based on what I see with some of the charts, we're probably going to come up here and fill this gap at this point. Um, so I would say 75, 25, we come up here and fill this gap. There's probably a little bit more to go. So on the daily, starting out on the higher time frames, we have this right here. That's the support level, the demand level. You can see we hit it right here and bounced out of it. And then above we have supply zone, clear supply zone. We get this candle and then we get a big candle down. This candle does not come back into this candle, clear supply zone. So supply, demand, and we got that big bounce and then we came back down. We didn't quite hit the demand zone again. So now you can't really see anything, so you have to go down on lower time frames. Uh, four hour time frame, still can't see anything. Three hour, can't really see anything. Two hour, you start being able to see things, but I think that the hourly is actually probably best here. And the reason I say that is, look where we hit yesterday. We topped out at 360.58. That was also the 1.61 fib of this candle if you go on lower time frames. So this is more than likely um, the A wave here. What was the top? 360.64. We are coming up pre-market, but uh, the top 360.64. And then right here, you can see a pretty obvious support zone on the hourly. So I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up looking like this, despite going up pre-market, I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back here to the 0.38 fib at 357.81. And if we lose this supply zone, the next one is down here at 354.94. I would say we probably should be able to hold this right here at 357. And if we come through that, then there's a good chance that we're starting a third wave down. So just based on this, you can kind of get an idea of what to expect. If we go higher in pre-market here and we break above this at 361.30, let's just say we keep on going higher, which I think is less likely. I think we're probably going to pull back first. Then if we break through this zone right here, then we're probably going to go all the way up here to 364. Uh, there is... This isn't really a supply zone. These aren't really supply zones. This is the best supply zone I see. So if we break through this, I would be surprised if we didn't come up here to 364, considering this is at 353 and this is at 351. $2 higher than this is 364. So the question is, are we going to go straight to 364 today? Or are we going to pull back and then go there? So it's either going to look like that. Or is it going to just go straight through? Or is it going to be... This is the least likely, obviously. And honestly, this doesn't even look like a five-wave move anymore. Unfortunately, on lower time frames, you can potentially call it that. But it looks more like a B-wave now. So, um, I'm actually... I can keep the fourth wave until we break above this. But the least likely now is probably this. So those are the zones I'm looking at. And we are actually coming higher now in pre-market. The top, the top was at 360.59. So watch 
three sixty one thirty one. Let's go on lower time frames and see. This is probably a B wave. So I do think we're probably going to come down. I mean, it looks like it's in the one minute time frame, so you take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but this looks to me like an ABC move, ABC. This would be a C wave higher. And you could actually probably call this a supply zone too on the one minute time frame. But I would expect probably maybe something like that. And then uh, bounce and then go lower. So the 1.61 fib, let's say we come up here to. Oh, well, you, you guys get the picture. I don't need to go over all this. This is in the one minute time frame. So just watch 361.31. We got the demand zone here at 358. If we pull back, I'd probably look at the 0.38 fib here at 357.80. And again, the big demand zone is up here at 364.53. So that is QQQ. And again, this is a corrective move. So if we come up here, I don't expect to break through this at all. I would even, I would be surprised if it even got to the very top of this. Probably max like 367. And then we're going to sell off. So QQQ, now SPY. So daily, so daily, a very clear demand zone right here. Again, you get this candle, then you get a big move higher, and then this basically comes to the very top of the candle. It barely breaks into it. So that's a pretty good demand zone, and that's probably one of the places I would expect to come back down if we come up here and then break down again. Um, so demand right there, and then supply. It's the same thing as QQQ. It's a little bit higher though. It's about 4% higher, but it's kind of, it's the same gap from QQQ, except for SPY sold off more than uh, QQQ. So the gap up here on the daily, the next one is right here. I don't see any supply zones right here, unless you go on smaller time frames. So daily demand, daily supply, now let's go down lower time frames, and you have the supply zone on the four hour now. 430 to 432, candle, big move lower, doesn't break back into the candle. Already hit it right here and bounced off of it. Um, this one right here is, you can see it on the three hour time frame, 425.59 which we are not there yet, we're getting close. And 427.33, that is also a supply zone. Um, so those are the two major supply zones that you have below 438. So in order to get up to 438, if SPY was gonna break out from here, it's gonna have to go through this supply zone and this supply zone and eventually break this high at 432.33. So that's about a 2% move from here. I don't expect it to happen. And let's just see. So again, and then also when you go down a lower time frame, so I have this one on the four hour, but then you also have this candle within it that makes it even more specific. 430.86 to 432.29. And you can see we hit it right here and came down. So that is a pretty good zone right there. And then this zone right here, we did the same thing. We hit it right here and then came down and we're about to hit it again right here. So I would expect some kind of reaction to the downside here. I wouldn't expect it to break through this at all. So um, SPY is obviously weaker than QQQ. Let me bring up QQQ again. Whoops. And just see if we have any. So 
so uh, 360 56 so QQQ is just so much stronger than spy right now and I don't know if that's because the banking sector financials are weak I haven't looked at those stocks in a while but um, it doesn't have a lot of resistance compared to spy but if this goes up to 364 that's about a 1% move 1% on SPY is about 428. So we might see SPY only hit right here or it could come up to here to 430 to 432. So that those are the zones on SPY. The only uh, demand zone below is right here at 419.87. Unless there's something below right here. Let me look. You could call this a... Um, demand zone. So if we pull back, it's probably similar to where I said on QQQ. I'd probably be looking for potentially 422.91 right here. So probably something like this if we did pull back, but we're not doing that right now. And let's just see where that would take us. So I would say there's a pretty good chance that we don't even break 427 before we start another move down. And on QQQ, if we pull back here, which does not look likely right now, you can see 460 or 365. So there's QQQ and there is SPY. And now let's do Tesla. Get rid of all these lines first. Okay, I'm gonna keep the gap fill. Gap fill, we basically filled it yesterday. And it's not doing that much right now. And I need to remove all of these as well. So, Tesla. And I mean, for most people, I think the supply demand is all you really need. This The Elliott wave helps out just knowing like general direction, but it can be kind of complicated sometimes and can cause a lot of problems if you don't have it like paired with something else. So on the daily for Tesla, uh, this is a clear supply or demand zone right here. We did break through it right here though. But we also tapped it right here at 234. So this is the one demand zone I see between 220 and 234. And then below that, uh, you do have a gap fill right here. But that's not a very good demand zone. I'm going to remove that for right now. That's the best daily demand right here. This is either going to be 1 or A. And then this is going to be... So we have A, this is a B wave right here. Then we have one down and we're making another corrective move here. On the daily, here's your next um, supply zone right here, pretty obvious. Candle, move down, does not break back into this candle and then moves down farther. Supply zone right there. And we are right on the cusp of it. And that's why I said this is a good short right here. It hit demand, it's going back into supply. It also has retraced 0.61 fib. As I said in the last video, if you want to short this, you're risking like, I mean, not using options. Let's just say you did, you actually shorted shares. You're risking about $17 if you get it at 262 to make. Uh, make about $44. So you're, you're getting like a roughly like two and a half to three to one risk reward ratio. So that's pretty good. And you also know this is a corrective wave. And the 1.61 fib of the A wave is at 267.25.
So we know this is daily demand. Now let's go down and just see if there's a more specific area, which there is, and it is right here actually. So 266 to 273. So we know that Tesla can actually go a little bit higher here. So you get this candle, you get a small move, move down here, but then this candle doesn't come back into it and moves really far down. So that's where you get the whole four hour candle, but this is a more specific one. And you can keep on moving down if you want. But um, actually this candle looks a little bit better. Either way, 267 is right in either candle. And that would be the between the 0.61 and the 0.78 retracement. So that would be a perfect short level into supply. And then you're going to get this potentially. Or you're going to get five waves down. If you get five ways down, you're going to get even better risk reward ratio. You're getting, you're going to get something down to like 190, 200 or so. Then you're getting like an insane risk reward ratio. So that is Tesla right there. If we fall back today, which I think is likely, let's just say this is wave one and this is wave two. Wave three should be done. Um, actually, it's up a little bit right now, so maybe it will hit the gap fill and and pull back. Then you're looking at a pullback to. Did this hit the 1.61 fib? I don't know. It did. You're probably looking for a pullback here to like 258 if it does pull back. So 258. So then now you can go, you can do the process again and just see is there any demand zones there? I don't see any there. So um, you might have to go down on like really low time frames. And at that point, it's not very, um, it's not going to be the best 30 minute hourly. Maybe this area right here, this does come back into it. That would probably be your best bet. And that is around, right around where I said it might pull back to 255, 59 to 258. And so you might be looking at something like, like that. And then that would complete the overall ABC move. So A, B, C, right to the 1.61 fib. Short it, stop above the high, and look for the next move down. So that is Tesla, supply, demand, a little bit of Elliott Wave. Let's go over Microsoft. And I need Tesla and Microsoft done pretty well because I own both the stocks. I'm trying to sell cover calls, but I want to like try to hit it almost perfectly. And not get it to the point where I miss it and it goes up like five or ten bucks afterwards. That's the worst when you're selling cover calls. So on the daily below, we have this demand zone right here at 308.58, 306.25. On the upside, I don't see anything on the daily for the upside. There's no good um, supply zones on the daily. There is one right here that I don't have marked. I think this is a four hour one. I'm going to remove it right now. This is the best daily one right here that I see. This came back into it and then it sold off. But it did go above it too. So it might not be the strongest supply zone. But I'll put that right there. Um, besides that, there's no other daily ones that I see. If you look at this move right here, on this move, uh, not really. This is the best one I see. 
So this one right here is actually the four hour. You can see it's pretty good. This does come back into it shortly. Let me go down to the two hour and just see. Mm. The four hour is the best, but um, it does come slightly back into it. So I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's where I'm kind of aiming for a second wave to end. If this is a second wave, it could be a B wave as well. So let's just leave it there for now. So we have daily down here, four hour here. I don't see any good um, good ones above it right now. We're at 319.85 pre-market. And so we have A right here, B down here, or WX, one of the two. This started right here, so I'm looking for a move potentially 328.69. Let's just see where the 1.61 fib of this is such a weird move. It's it's got to be WXY. So the B wave might have already happened. This might have been the end of the um, A wave right here and then pull back for a B wave. And we might have already started the C wave then. So the whole thing would look like and then I'd be looking for the 1.61 fib Mm, that doesn't look very good. 320.05 already. I guess there's a slight chance that the move is not finished yet. Maybe we go a little bit higher at the open and then pull back um, midway through. But I think that the move actually ended right here. Because this is, this is an ABC move right here. The length of time, this one took Thursday to Monday, took about two days. This took about a day and a half. So WX, we'll see what happens. Microsoft's such a weird stock because there's so much chop in all of these moves. That it makes like every single move, W, X, Y, A, B, C, etc. It's hard to um, actually gauge where we're at in a move. Unless you zoom out a little bit. It's actually easier to look at it on higher time frames. Some stocks like Tesla is pretty easy to read. But anyway, I'm assuming that this is W, no W up here and then X right here. And we're going to go up here at at least 325 to 328. If we do fall, let's just look at the demand zones. We have a demand zone very clearly right here. And this is where I was trying to buy it yesterday. I was trying to buy it right here on a pullback. Because we had a gap fill right there. There's a gap fill there. And I was going to try to buy it right here. It would have been like a really good, strong place to buy it. But we did not come back far enough, and I didn't, I didn't get it. And now I'm just sitting here watching it go up. So looks to me like this is probably – maybe it won't make it all the way to 325. Maybe 324.15. We'll see on Microsoft. That's the demand zone right there. Um, there is a supply zone right here also. It did hit a supply zone yesterday. So we are currently basically at those highs. We're actually above them now. Let's see if it breaks above 321.45. If it does that, it's probably going to go straight up to 325. So that's kind of the roadmap. If it pulls back, 
I don't really see it coming all the way down here at 313 before it um, hits 325. Possible, but not likely. What is going on with this pre-market action? We're back. We we're at 320. Now we're at 319. So we'll see what happens with Microsoft, Amazon. It's a long video because it's actually how I'm getting ready to. I'm just putting it on, putting it on video so you can watch it if you want to. Try to get an idea of what to look for. Um, and gap fills on Microsoft, there's no gap fills above but below at 313.50. Amazon has gap fills at 130.78, 135.15. I think it has a small one right here. Now, gap right here at 124.91. And it is up pre market a little bit. So let's do the same thing. Go to the daily. On the daily. So this hit right here, it didn't hit any um, demand zones that I could see. So that was just a random hit. We don't have any below until right here. At 116.92 to 114.18, maybe it will go there when the whole market sells off one more time. And above, we have a supply zone at 135. So that's kind of equivalent to maybe SPY at 440. Kind of the same um, gap fill. So there's no demand around here until 116, man on the daily at 135. So we're kind of in the middle right now. Going down, we have... Uh, we have a supply zone right here on the four hour. And that's right in the gap fill. So you can see we hit it right here and came down. And then there's also a demand zone right here on the four hour. And... You can also consider this on lower time frames. There's a lot of demand between 124.31 and 126.40. So basically in this area is a lot of demand. And we're bouncing out of it right now. We're at 127.60. So on Amazon, we're probably going to hit this level right here at 130.34 to 131.78 and I wouldn't expect to get higher than that. Let me look at this on lower time frames. What's going on here? Okay. So ABC, this was a five wave move though. I think, yeah, five waves, clear five waves. So that's kind of interesting. That makes me think we might not break 130.48, but I would expect it to at least come up here to 130.48. Oh, look at that. There's a small supply zone on the 15 minute. Is that a gap fill as well? I don't know why this is running so slow. Yeah, there's a gap fill up here as well. So there you go. See, this is kind of how it works out for me. I just find where I think it's going to go, and sometimes there'll be a gap fill there. So gap fill is also at 128.84. I would expect, as I just showed you, this would be the same length from the bottom. goes right to the gap fill. So this would be like my number one spot for it to land. between 128.84 and 129.47. So that gives it about another 1% upside. So we're looking at this like, and that is not good if you are bullish because 
This is a five wave move. This looks like it's going to be a second wave. And you have this below demand zone. So what do you think is going to happen? Third wave down here to 120 bounce, probably going down to 115. I mean, it's not definite, but this looks very likely to me. So I would, I would honestly consider this most likely a wave one. And then this would be a wave two. And then you'd get wave three down here, four or five down here to the demand zone. And then that would be a really good spot to buy. Let me zoom out here and just take a look at where is the 1.61 fib? So the 1.61 fib is right around 121.05. So I guess it's possible, just like Microsoft, that we end up getting um, some kind of ABC move lower too. Hmm, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Right now it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to figure out like what that means for the whole move. So again, A, or this might've been a corrective like fourth wave or something like this. We get a five wave move down and we're getting a move down here. We might get ABC down to 121 or a five wave move down to 115. So that's Amazon, Apple, So Apple, okay, clear daily demand right here. We already hit it, bounced out of it. Um, clear daily supply right here. Have not hit that area yet. Clear da daily supply up here. We have all kinds of gap fills up here. There's a gap fill at 175.82. So there's all of our daily stuff right there. Let's go to the four hour. Four hour clear. Supply zone right here. And so supply uh, supply zone right there. Um, I don't see anything below for demand. But um, I think it's likely 173.83. It's barely up. I said yesterday or in the video earlier that I think this is going to fall back, but it looked pretty corrective. I wouldn't be surprised if it fell back here. But still, that's above this supply zone, so maybe it won't get through that supply zone. Or maybe we get a move down here, lower. Uh, maybe this ends up being something like that and then you can measure it would have to fall pretty good though so i don't think it's going to fall that much so um apple supply zone right there that's not really working out to try to figure out what's going to do but supply zone right there and then there's also a supply zone right here on the four hour at 178 to 179. That's not a very good one though. This one's more clear right here at the gap fill 175.35 to 176.12. And that's pretty much it on Apple. We got gap fill here, bunch of gap fills up here. I would be surprised if Apple breaks through 176.36 over the next couple of days and then I'm expecting it to come back down. So in the video I go over in more depth I talked about it's probably coming down here to 164 and then also
basically the exact same place. So this right here is some kind of corrective move. And I would guess it's probably A, B, C. So let's just see. And look at that. Right to 176, right to the zone. I just showed you the other ones they're going to hit at 164. So Apple, I would expect to get into this box right here and then fall down here to 164. So I think that's it for now. I guess one more is the dollar. Hopefully these videos are really helping out. This is honestly... Um, I think supply demand should be the first thing you do. Gap fills as well. You can do moving averages too. but And then you can use Elliott Wave last. Try to get your thesis of what is actually going to happen. And this should help you trade. Even on smaller time frames, you use this. It'll help you out a lot. So the dollar... 105.65 to 106.28... Uh, that is going to be a demand zone and then above above we have right here I did this earlier we have a supply zone right here that got hit right here already and that's where we hit earlier so it needs to get through 107.73 to make new highs I think that was likely the fifth wave, but again, it could be an extended fifth wave. If it extends, then we have another, uh, kind of another one right here. It's not the best uh, supply zone. Let me go on lower time frames. There it is right here. This is better, the four hour. Potentially 110, but that would be kind of pushing it, I think. So there's a good chance a dollar already topped out just because we are in between supply and demand. We hit it with the fifth wave here. So maybe we get a move down right here. This does look kind of corrective though, so it's possible we get five more waves. It's possible we do that, or maybe it topped out. And we're starting to move down and we get a bounce back when the market falls again. All right, VIX this is the last one. So clear demand zone right here. Um, That's not a very good one, I don't think. So this is the best demand zone here at 15. We're down right now. I don't think we're going to make it to 15. If we do, then the market's going to take off, obviously. Let's see if there's any other demand zones. And there is right here. A very, very clear one. Is that a gap as well? It's not a gap, but it's a very clear demand zone and I would expect the market to probably or the VIX to probably bounce out of this so the VIX might hit eighteen oh three to seventeen fifty one and then below that we're looking down here so the VIX has to hold It's got to hold this box, in my opinion. If it loses this box, it's probably going all the way down here to 15. So if it needs to hold 1750 to 1805, and then it can go higher. Um, as far as where it can go higher, that is a good question. Um, I guess it's good that there's not any supply zones can go a lot higher um, 
this is probably the best one right here. We get this, get a move down, and this candle barely comes into it. I would say that's the best one I see. Also, this went into it and then came down. So, right there. So, if my thesis about the market going lower happens, another thing too, look where the 1.61 fib of this move is. Right in the middle of that box. So, if my thesis that we're going to go lower happens, then it's probably going to be something like this. Because I don't expect this melt up to last that long. So that's pretty much the pre-market wrap up, or pre-market supply demand, gap fill, all that stuff, all in one video. Um, hopefully you're getting a grasp of it. And if you know supply demand and you know gap fills, then that will just help you out enough where you don't really need Elliott Wave as much. It does help out sometimes to get the overall picture, but this is honestly honestly good enough for a lot of people. I know a lot of people just trade with supply and demand. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll put some timestamps on this one. I know it's a long video. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this is helping you out. If you like the pre-market videos, maybe I'll start doing them more. And uh, that's it for now. Good luck trading today.